just in a hurry though. Yeah, oh, we were, yeah. Okay. we're pro life and though. We realized oh, that yeah. we were also just even later. So yeah, <laughs> we were we were. It was nothing against y'all. I appreciate that. Yeah. Man. I totally, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't you don't know us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know y'all. Yes. This is right. church, dude. Hey, totally. Oh, oh yeah, that's, this is that's church. Right. We're this at church gathering. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. There's like two so, or more. My name's Alan, by the way. Okay, Elliot. Great to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Alice. Alice, nice to meet you. Nathan. Nathan. Okay, great. My daughter Nadia is. Oh, awesome. Great to meet you, Nadia. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we think that like, I I know that this church is a pro-life church. Right. Totally. The whole reason we're here is, and it's it like with kind of a two-prong thing, like you, you go to the good man's house for help. You know what yeah, I'm saying? absolutely. Like you don't go to All Souls Unitarian and be like, please help us stop murdering right, the murdering right, of babies. Right, They'll totally. be like, no, we help with that. Like, right, exactly. We're cool with that. Yeah, you know? yeah. The other thing is like, I think that the, the pro-life label has become a... Uh, an unhelpful thing mm. that actually masks a lot of the problems. Mm. Yeah, the pro-life movement, the pro-life politicians, yeah. the pro-life lobbyists. Absolutely. This whole industry, yeah. they make they make all this money mm. and all this like. Uh, it's still about four billion a year. Uh, so yeah. I don't know how much it's a lot. It's a lot. All this media attention focused on how they are fighting abortion. Mm. What do they do? In right. reality, what right. they're doing is they're pushing for and getting past things like, uh, if you want to murder your baby, you have to get an ultrasound. Right. And then you can murder your baby. Yeah. See, the implicit or sometimes explicit in all of those laws is, mm. and then you can murder your baby. Right. If the hallways are wide enough in the abortion mill, which is an actual law on the right. books here in Oklahoma. Yeah. If you wait. 72 hours. If you get a second opinion, if you go to, uh, if you get him murdered within 10 miles of a hospital, if your abortionist, I mean hired assassin, has admitting privileges at the hospital, right. all these regulations, hoops that you have to jump through, yeah. and then you can murder your baby. Totally. And what that's done is a couple things. One is it educates the culture. Exactly. That like we can be reasoned with. Totally. Okay. Totally. Oh yeah, we we think that it's murder, but we're fine with you not outlawing murder. Right. I mean, um, imagine it were legal to go in and shoot toddlers in your nursery. Yeah. You know, what are we going to pass a law? That says you can only shoot two a week. Right. I mean, you're down from ten. Yeah, exactly. And it's not even that exactly. strong. No, totally. The other thing is that what you're doing is actually enshrining mm. abor abortion in law. Mm. Roe versus Wade, Planned yeah. Parenthood versus Casey are not laws. Right. They're just Supreme Court opinions. Totally. What the state of Oklahoma and every state should have done is just said, Yeah. That's stupid. We're not following that garbage. Exactly. Okay. okay. And yeah. just and said no, no, it's going to be outlawed. And you know, like, what are you going to do? Send the army mm -hmm. to make us allow yeah. the abortion of babies? Right. Go ahead. Right. You know, and we'll yeah. pray and we'll see who wins. Yeah. You know? Like, like literally let God fight for us, mm -hmm. you know? But instead, what we've done is we've enshrined all these laws that say er, murder is okay under certain conditions. Totally. Okay? Totally. The pro-life movement is yeah, fatally compromised. Right. Now, there came, the reason I'm here kind of doing this thing right now with this particular pamphlet because the gubernatorial election, mm. Dan Fisher was one of the uh, was the uh, one of the uh, candidates for the nomination. Right. Okay. Right. And he wanted to abolish abortion mm. against the pro life movement, yeah. preaching totally. the gospel from his campaign stops. Right. Like he's doing what Christians do when they run for office. Right. Preaching the gospel, yep. calling yeah. abortion sin. Right. The blood of babies is on our land. We need to repent. Saying all these Bible words that nobody wants to hear. Right. Exactly. exactly. And he came in fourth. Well, right. A distant right. fourth. Right. Okay. Now. I was involved in the campaign. Uh -huh. I didn't meet a single person from your church. I don't know if a single dollar your church gave. I don't know if a single hour that your church contributed to getting him elected. There's an abortion mill a mile and a half from here that I've been to many times. I spent dozens of hours there and hundreds at the one in Norman because I used to live in North. Right. Never have I heard of a single person from here going to that abortion mill. Do you think there are different tactics? The people take. I think there are different tactics. However, there are different like there's only there's some tactics that everybody needs to do, mm -hmm. and then there's some on the fringes that some need to do. Totally. totally. Like, there's no excuse for there not to be thousands of people in front of the abortion mill. But when you think about all the Christians in Tulsa, all the church-going people in Tulsa, a thousand people is what? Ten percent? One percent? We can't get one percent of anybody to do anything. Uh, that's the most obvious thing, which is go to the abortion mill. Mm. We get at most six, seven totally. on like for a couple hours totally. or maybe an hour on a Friday morning or whatever. How is it possible that we don't get that? So Jesus is like most of Jesus's ministry. If you recall, what is he, what did he do? He went into the towns and villages of Judea and Samaria, yeah, or Judea and Galilee, sorry, preaching, proclaiming the word of God and saying, repent for the kingdom of God has come, mm -hmm. right? So he went out to the surrounding culture and basically confronted it with the gospel with, mm. in no uncertain terms, very clearly, very boldly, very loudly, and visibly, right. right? On what basis does anybody in our current culture say that we're going to pivot 180 degrees away from what he did and mostly keep it to ourselves and call it Christianity when we meet in buildings mm. like this and hide our light behind the walls? Mm. I don't see a justification for, for that in the scripture. 
Now, the Bible says in numerous different places, for example, Amos chapter 5, that's cited in these pamphlets, that uh, God says stuff like, take away from me the sound of your harps, the noise of your singing. Yeah, absolutely. I have no interest. I hate your festivals, your fasts, your feasts, your offering of incense, your offering of animals, all that stuff. Now, he instituted all that stuff. He commanded it, right, in the, right. In the Mosaic Law. Yep. And then he says he hates it. Why? Because they were not making righteousness, justice, and mercy roll down like waters. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, your church has not done that. God hates the worship that goes on inside there. He just hates it. Hmm. And I, like, I would like to see, I'd like to engage somebody biblically on why he doesn't hate it. Hmm. Because I would like to see the righteousness and mercy and justice that's being established by this church. Because I ain't seen it so far. Well, I think, I think here's where, here's where I think that y'all have went wrong a little bit. Mm -hmm. Please. I think that y'all have stood outside the church, but... I don't think that y'all have really talked to the people who are in that church. Um, and I don't think y'all have heard uh, the heart and the vision behind these people, uh, why they do what they do. So I think that y'all are spot on with everything that you've done. Uh, but I think that the difference in our approaches and probably our worldviews is, um, and what this is gonna sound like to you is that I'm justifying inactivity, which is not at all the case. But I think my whole point is I would rather encourage the church from an internal place of love, an exhortation, um, but we also still need the external uh, exhortation to repent and to turn away. So I think where we disagree a little bit is in functions and in purposes. So while y'all are doing the external, the um, judgment, the prophetic voice, I would rather prefer to be the internal exhortation of love. Hey guys, we need to do this. So. I think that it's just a difference in tactics, ultimately. Has that been happening so far? Um, I've been at this church like two months, man. So uh, I've been here fairly recently, um, and I do see it happening. So I think that I think getting in there actually changes your whole perspective. What, what church are you a member of right now? I don't think of church as a thing that's supposed to be like a member thing. Well, I are you attending a church? I don't think church is a thing when it attends. And honestly, like this is far more uh, edifying this kind of gathering when I gather with with several people totally to reach out to people and have gospel-centered conversation who's your elder that's like that who's, sorry who's my elder what is that I'm sorry I don't know what that question means. do you have uh, a spiritual leader someone to guide you um, someone further you along mean like the other, way? Than the, other than the scripture yes other than the scripture okay I'm trying to I'm trying to understand how to answer your question. Mm. Jesus said stuff like "call no man father." Oh, absolutely, that absolutely. Nature, I'm know? not talking about anyone. Okay, anyone so who's, not like somebody who's a father. title. No, no, not at all. You're asking not if there's all. other people that I look to as like strong influences. The question is, how are you being discipled right now, other than scripture? How am I being discipled? Well, by lots of different people. I allow anybody to disciple me, actually. Mm -hmm. Like literally anybody who has a scriptural word to totally. bring correction to okay. me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm open to that from everybody. Right. I would love for a more mature believer to come mm. alongside me in a way and I'm always on the lookout for it. Absolutely. And I caught like, there was a there was an older guy out here and I was like trying to get him to, I was asking him questions designed to see if he would be willing to enter into that kind of relationship with me. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, he just wanted to give me a bunch of um, uh, platitudes like totally. most people do. So I'm totally open to that. God mm -hmm. has not provided it so far. Totally, absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, I'll sure be praying for you. Uh, Alan? Yeah, Alan. Alan, okay. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me ask you, what are you planning yeah. to do now that you know? Because you, right now you know that the ch this church could have thrown all its weight behind supporting Dan Fisher, and if it had, if you would thrown significant weight, you would have doubled the power of the campaign, because the campaign was not big. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Like, I was mm -hmm. in it. No, I believe that. I was in it. I, I was trying that. to get, I was trying to recruit, I was trying to mobilize people, and I was not getting much response. A church like this, even though it's not, quote unquote, a mega church, would have doubled the force of the campaign. Totally. Okay. Totally. Now, you've got people repping Kevin Stitt, who go to this church. Mm -hmm. Kevin Smith's not gonna do anything about abortion. He actually literally said, Roe versus Wade is the law of the land. We're not gonna do anything about it. We just have to wait for the Supreme Court to establish justice for us, blah, blah, blah. Kevin Smith's just an apparatchik who's out to rep his own his own brand. Totally. So is Mick Cornett. Totally. Those are the two guys who are gonna be the next governor of Oklahoma, one of those two, mm -hmm. okay? Your church contributed to that state of affairs. What specifically are you gonna do going forward since you are located a mile and a half from the abortion mill, since I go out to the BOK Center and preach the gospel and there's nobody else out there doing it, since I've never met anybody who knocked on my door from your church to try to offer me the gospel, never seen anybody hand out a tract from Believer's Church, never seen anybody at the abortion mill nor heard of them. Totally. And all that stuff. And yet your church has been in a position to know for 20 years that the Holocaust is going on because you're a pro-life church. Mm. What specific changes are you going to make? And what, what calls to repentance are you going to make from within? 
You know what? I think that that's a difficult question because I don't have an answer right now. Mm -hmm. That's a fair answer. Totally. It's a fair answer. I'll now, be honest with you. Yeah, I really don't have an answer to that. Here's what I think will happen to you. If, and only if, you try to bring the proper and biblical call to repentance from within, as you mentioned, uh, I think that they will kick you out. They'll put pressure first to try to make you conform because that's a machine. The machine has to keep running because See, that's their salaries. Totally where I disagree with their you salaries to pay. Absolutely, well, 100%. You don't even have to believe me. I challenge you. Prove me wrong. Okay. Go in there with your powerful call to so repentance. So I think the difference one. is that's uh, like I said. It comes back to a difference in tactics. Um, I don't believe that I am called to stand up in the church and say, "Hey, this is wrong." I, like I said, I think it's a difference in tactics where it's from a relational perspective. Um, this conversation wouldn't be happening if I didn't have that relational perspective. If I just said, hey, here's what I believe and I'm going to voice that opinion, mm -hmm. I would have just said, nope, you're wrong, kept walking. But yet, because I'm from a relational perspective, we're even having and engaging in this conversation right now. That's true. You know, so, what, uh, there's, 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 there's two elements, though, two, exactly. two, relative, or, uh, two necessary uh, facts to bring about this conversation. Mm -hmm. One of them is that you have to be willing to stop and talk, but the, the first, the most necessary one is that I had to be doing this with signs of dead babies oh, out in front of your church building. Very true. You're not having this conversation. If I'm not here, mm -hmm. and if Nate's not totally. here, Absolutely. now why is that? Why is you, so? You, I'm not even asking you to answer this. I'm just. I just want you to think about this. There's a reason why they have not engaged that conversation. Dan Fisher lost him in a distant fourth to the three uh, industry apparatchiks that totally. were running against him. Okay. Totally. Now he should have won easily because all the church, all the churches should have risen up and been like, oh, somebody preaches the gospel during the campaign stops. Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants to establish righteous decrees. No brainer. We obviously need to get this guy elected. Because they're not interested in that, that is why he did not get that support, despite wide reaching claims. They knew. I myself canvassed your church parking lot with Dan Fisher literature. Totally. It was well written. It looked way better than this because <laughs> totally. it was not me who designed it. Right, right. <laughs> It was, it was this guy who was this genius graphic designer. It looked good. It was very cogent. There were no misspellings. I checked it. Uh, <laughs> it had like all the necessary information to draw a very clear distinction between Cornette, Stitt, mm -hmm. Lamb, and what Fisher is saying. Right. He's the only one saying Bible things. Hmm. Your church just said, oh, clear difference. Let's talk about that. The only reason this conversation is happening is because I'm here. Yeah. But that absolutely. should not be totally. the case. Totally. If they're pretending to guide and lead someone like you spiritually and to be your elder and to be your overseer and whatnot, then they need to do these things. Why does it take my coming here as well, some outsider? I also to do think it? that that you know, scripture is pretty clear they will know we are Christians by our love, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, not by what we don't like. Um, and not that I think that, you know, we have no place to voice our opinions or anything like that. Um, I think it's also a difference in political standpoints. I'm not liberal by any means. <laughs> I'm not even, uh, yeah, I, I don't really lean towards that very much. Sure. There are certain things that I really appreciate about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's a difference in, I don't think that the gospel that Jesus preached was political. I think it was anti-political. Um, and if you see him get into the Greek a little bit, study some of his claims, and you recognize he's very much contradicting <laughs> Caesar's rule and Caesar's power. So I pretty much just dissociate with the government in general. I think that you could get the most Republican Christian person in office still is going to fail. Not Republican. What needs was that? A, not, not Republican. Needs to be a Christian. Christian. Yeah. Exactly. He yeah. needs to reject the could Republican be a Christian. Party. They could be conservative. They could be Democrat. You could get the most uh, a firm Christian leader in office. And I still think that um, because the way that our, our government runs off of corruption, that still will fail. Um, what if you stood against the corruption in the office? Oh, and we have. There are Who people, has? Christians. Who? Christians. Who? The Christian party. I don't see any. I don't see any. <laughs> like, there's none that are well known. None that are well known. No. And no, you know why? Absolutely. Dan Fisher. Church leaders. Dan Fisher was going to stand have against it. Leonard Ravenhill, David Wilkerson. Yeah, but these aren't these aren't politicians, especially not of our time. Oh, not politicians of our time. Yeah, but, but you Christians still look. In yeah, the church Christians in the church. Well, sure. What I'm talking about is like people who actually take action rather than like somebody even like Ravenhill. Which okay, I mean, I, I, you know, Ravenhill's cool. Pretty but cool. But basically, guy. what he, I mean, he's okay. What he does is he goes around to different assemblies of Christians, mm -hmm. and then he says, "Hey, be more Christian." Exactly. Which is like there's a role and a place for that, but that's not what Jesus spent an awful lot of his time not only doing that with his small group. But what was his major mode of outreach publicly? It's to people he didn't know mm -hmm. in the towns and villages of Judea and Galilee. Yeah. Preaching visibly. Absolutely. And he said, you must establish justice. So I, I understand what you're saying about the politics, yet we have to 
like politics is just a way that we dispense with things that we dislike. Mm -hmm. We slap the label politics on it and then we ignore it. Exactly. Jesus said the greatest commandments are love God, mm -hmm. love your neighbor as love yourself. Neighbor. Yep. Okay. Now, if your neighbor is being murdered. Well, yeah. The right thing to oh, do we is don't to disagree stop that on murder. This is being wrong. Well, but you we don't just disagree that it needs. I know, to I know. But either. what you just yeah. did when you said that it's just politics, and we don't like we need to stick. Oh, I didn't say it was just politics. politics. Okay, I said that um, your approach to the issue of abortion is we need to elect somebody. No, it's not. That's what what, what I've been saying. No, this it's whole not. Time. Uh, you're misunderstanding. Yeah, no, no. Allow me to explain. What I'm saying is that Dan Fisher's campaign was the easiest thing we could have done mm. to abolish it bloodlessly. Right. Since it was so easy. The church within the same political like the same political structures we don't have to kill anybody we don't have to blow up anything totally. all we got to do is help this guy get elected totally now what's the way forward you know maybe try again mm -hmm. I guess yeah. but the, 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 the thing is when somebody stands up and says they want to actually establish justice using the political structures that doesn't require killing anybody the easiest thing to do is draw the line totally you've got people repping Kevin Stitt within your church building totally okay yeah now when you have somebody who is promoting unrighteous decrees and somebody promoting righteous decrees and when it touches on love of neighbor to such an extent that the one guy says it's okay that 7,000 babies or more will be murdered in Oklahoma when we have the power to change it versus the guy says no that's not okay we should love our neighbor enough to make that criminalized at, and that's like step one totally. step one is criminalized yeah. so there's no like there's a huge difference between the two and that didn't happen that's what I'm trying to say. Totally. There's all these ways that. to attack it. I get that. Lots of different ways. Yeah. And there's actually a link on the pamphlet to yeah. lots of ideas. Well, I'll read through it. this. I'll study this a little bit more. We're actually running late to okay. engagement. But, oh, sorry about um, that. For stopping yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. So, Alan and Nathan. Nathan, yeah. Uh, can I just pray for you guys really quick? Sure. Awesome. Sure. You're okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Sure. Do it. Um, and then Nadia, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lord Jesus, we just lift up Alan, Nathan, and Nadia. We thank you for their work here on this earth. Um, Father, I just I just pray that you just see them right now, that you just continue to smile upon them. Um, Lord, and we just come to you and we ask what the disciples say. We say, Lord, increase our faith. Um, we ask that you just grow that process in us. I thank you for the work that they're doing. Lord, I pray that, that you will just uh, continue to bring effectiveness to what they're doing here, um, that you'll bless what they're doing here, and I pray that you'll just continue to smile upon them and show them favor. Lord, if they have any needs, I lift those up to you and I just thank you that you see them and that you know them. Uh, I thank you for Alan, I thank you for Nathan, and I thank you for, for Nadia. Um, and I just thank you for this beautiful day. Keep them cool, send a nice breeze here. They sweating, toasty, <laughs> it's hot out, Especially Lord. Nathan. Especially <laughs> Nathan. So we thank you hey. for this day, we thank you for this conversation. Um, thank you for just bringing awareness in general. And in your name we pray, amen. amen. Yeah, Absolutely. Thanks yeah, a lot. Y'all have a great day. Have a great day. Yeah. Have a great day. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry.